Hello again, time for another dragon making here. So when we last left off, whoop, we, well, Simon here was just recently finished. We need to make the adoption scroll for him yet. Uh, kind of haven't finalized that quite yet, so that's uh, gonna be on my to-do list. And otherwise we are working on a green dragon here. Whoop, yeah. It's a yeah, dragon, oh wait, lesser dragon snake now. Uh, if it didn't have the tail, that's what I call a dragon caterpillar. Once it gets its tail, it's a lesser dragon snake. So now we've got to make its head, which is a greater dragon snake. So let's go about doing that. Let's go about doing that. Let's go about, oh, let's go about, oh, let's go about doing that. Oh, and I do have to apologize if you uh, see that uh, rash on my hand there. Unfortunately, the uh, nitrile-coated gloves at work have been uh, reacting with my skin. So I've uh, swapped to a different type of glove there, and uh, we'll see how that does. It's, uh, well, less itchy in general at work. And otherwise, we need 7 to 32-inch rings. Whoop. And we're going to need, I believe, 54 of them. Yeah, we're doing the regular style of head as opposed to the uh, toothed style. Toothed or toothed? I, can... I haven't quite decided which one I want to say there, which the correct version is. Let's say toothed. Toothed? Toothed. <laughs> the ultimate debate. So, now since we're making European 4 in 1, uh, I can use a whole pile of pre closed rings and pre opened rings. And. Yeah, that's just a little bit faster than using only open rings, which is, generally speaking, what we need for the rest of the dragon. Well, the scales themselves count as closed rings, so that's a bonus. And a lot of these rings are connecting, because they kind of do that well. They have a little seam there, and they can connect as well. Sort of like a wire puzzle. If you've ever had any of those wire puzzles that are made of, like, solid metal, like, you know, not just thin wire, but like a solid chunk of aluminum type of thing, Typically they'll slide together sort of like these rings, in that, you know, if you put them in just the right position, yeah, yeah, they'll slide out from each other. <laughs> they'll slide out from each other, and yeah, so these kind of work the same way. Usually if that I see them kind of connected like that, because you know they're shuffling around with the bag after shipping and everything, so they're going to be connected to each other like in that way just because it's going to happen. So I tend to just open one up all the way and then drop the other one off and either open it or close it. I'm not sure why I'm prattling on about that. It seems like a rather mundane, like, subject. Seems that sound off in the distance. I think it's something outside. I wasn't entirely sure if it was in my room. I don't think you'd hear it. It's kind of faint, but it's like, yeah, that's like other music playing, which, you know, I was kind of just ignoring, but then it's like, yeah, now you're sounding like you're like a grinding sound or something like that. It's like, okay, what's, what's, what's actually happening here? <laughs> Should I be concerned about this noise? <laughs> Like, it's just a periodic slight buzzing sound, sort of like an RC car or something like that. Wait. I'm getting a good read on it here. A hairdryer, maybe? I think that might be a hairdryer in one of the other suites. Oh, 
repetitive for you there but I am doing kind of repetitive work so you know if I got a good tune in my head then it's just gonna like you know kind of go on repeat a little bit and I like to throw the occasional change into the song there every so often kind of throws off my deities too a little bit because you know they're following along with the song and stuff yeah it's kind of fun that's kind of how I get new music or new songs all right I've been doing this for a while uh, let's throw in a switch and see what happens <laughs> Ooh, let me kind of sing you a little bit of uh, one of the very first songs that I actually thought of. It's called And Smack Them in the Cheek. <laughs> oh wait, how'd that go again? start for that song though. That's kind of got a different rhythm though. running through my head a little bit. They tend to change up fairly often, sort of like with, uh, with my song The Pickup Train. That one has some fairly often changing lyrics. Uh, hey, let's see, how's that one go? Um, uh... <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Challenge guy. I really like the end of that one. <laughs> Just it's got a nice upswing at the very end there, and it's really sudden and stuff. Ooh. Don't want to use the word abrupt. It's a negative sounding word. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, a pool in the say is helping me with that. <laughs> a notification, a notification. My phone just rang with a notification, but I don't really want to answer that. I don't really want to bug my phone, because it would ring. Oh, wow, I can't think of words straight fast enough. Cause it will distract my chainmail, and I want him to finish my dragon. That would be a terrible thing, cause I kinda wanna finish this thing. Soon you'll be done, soon you'll be done, in a little bit you'll be a dragon. Oh what a wonderful dragon you'll be, what a wonderful dragon, you know. Soon you'll be done, soon you'll be done, then you'll be a wonderful dragon. <laughs> oh, a little greeny here. Oh, you haven't got a name yet. We gotta do the dragon naming ceremony, except since this isn't live stream, I'll be talking to my deities and stuff and, you know, see what they recommend. Oh, I can't wait to get my live stream up and running again. I'll try uh, running it at uh, just different times of the day and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, otherwise see if I can get any kind of live stream whatsoever to work from, uh, you know, this place that I live in right now with this slow internet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, there is a chance that I might not have uh, my live stream running for the next several years, because uh, if I can't live stream from like where I'm living here from this place, and I, uh, you know, I'm not planning to move anytime soon because it's very hard to find places in the paw. Tiny chance I might move across town, but if I'm only going to be here for two years, is it really worth it to move? Like if they have lower rents or low lower rent, and allow me to have a pet cat. Then we're talking, but um, unless I get that, it's not really worth it. <laughs> like, there's my live stream. That's really the only thing that I would want to move. Well, aside from a cat, the only thing that I'd want to move for is faster internet so that I could live stream. So that may or may not happen in the paw. We'll see. We'll see. Hoping somehow. Not sure why, but how. <laughs> 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 I really did love live streaming. That was like my favoriteest thing on earth. But I did do like a year or two or a year and a half of straight up blog videoing. Video? Vlogging? A straight up year and a half of vlogging. So, uh, you know, I can walk that path again. At least until I can live stream again. Maybe I can even get Patreon supporters through my YouTube. So I'll be pushing YouTube for the next little while, no, that I haven't been, but, you know, my song of the day. Mm -hmm. I guess I can post myself on uh, Reddit every so often and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're out of closed rings. Yeah, I'm definitely hearing something outside. I don't know if you are, too. But at this point, it sounds like a buzzsaw. That's not even the right word. Circular saw. Maybe a circular saw. And general sounds of construction. Which is intriguing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, what are they doing to the apartment? Ooh. Okay, we need a few more closed rings here. We still have a whole ton of open ones, which is awesome. Because, okay, well, one of these is actually pre-closed entirely from a previous project, so that's awesome. And this one I'll just kind of close on its own. With previous projects, you know, if I make something incorrectly or it doesn't come out how I want it to, or, you know, for whatever reason I'm disassembling a section, a lot of the rings are going to end up pre-closed, because I'll just open up all these surrounding rings and then just, 
you know, put them wherever, back in the bin. So it's kind of nice when you come across a pre-closed one or a pre-open one. It's like, ooh, ooh, you're slightly less effort. <laughs> it's like previous re uh, previous me rewarded myself. Yay, thank you, me. Okay, so we've got our two sections of European 4 and 1, which look approximately like that. And we're basically going to sandwich them together, and then seam the ends of them together, which is what makes the weave known as alien mail. Which is a little bit AR specific, like aspect ratio. And I'm not 100% certain what the aspect ratio needs to be for alien mail. I want to say 4 and 1, or about 4.0. But, uh... I'll double check that sometime, I'm kind of curious. That's an interesting fact to kind of ponder. Okay, so... You've got the two sections of European 4 and 1 kind of, you know, sandwiched together. Now we just kind of got to knit along the edge over there and stuff. Meow! <laughs> I love my meow tattoo. Oh goodness, there's a massive story behind that one. Not really a good one, mind you. Well, it's a good story, but uh, not really a happy story. I'll prattle on about it anyway, just because. Get it off my chest. So, uh, for like a solid year, I was more or less possessed by a demon. Several of them, in fact. Like, spiritual demon, like the full-on thing. And uh, that generally sucked, but uh, one of them, uh, the whole reason uh, they uh, were uh, inside of me is because they pretended to be good spirits. And they pretended to be helping me and stuff. And uh, more or less because I was absolutely brand new to spirituality, I was also a little bit desperate to uh, keep talking to them because I've never talked to anything freaking spiritual before. This is so freaking awesome. So, you know, I kind of uh, kept, you know, talking to them, kept hanging around them, so to speak, uh, even after they were doing, like, bad things in my life, just because I don't want to lose this spirituality. I don't want to lose talking to them. And I had a lot of other shitty things going on in my life, like family problems and money problems and... You know, who knows what else? Housing problems. And, uh, where was I going with that? Okay, so anyways, uh, the uh, Meow Tattoo that I was going to get as basically a kind of reward to myself for having uh, done well in my live stream business, like my home business thingies and stuff. And, uh, so, uh, well, I, after I had started the live stream, I wasn't really successful per se. I had, like, you know, 10 followers or 10 people that would regularly watch my channel. Like, you know, while I'm live and stuff. And, uh, basically, I kept on, like, asking my deity, uh, the demon at the time, uh, can I get this tattoo? Can I get this tattoo? And they were like, no, 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 because, you know, I was basically being very, very, very devout at that point. And, uh, because that was, uh, the spirit that I specifically thought was being very, 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 very good to me. Turns out they were being very terrible, but, you know, though I'm going to be writing a book about this, honestly, one day, if nothing else, then to warn people. But uh, anyways, that spirit, um, uh, Miak was the demon's name, uh, it basically, uh, I'm not sure if that was uh, Miak or uh, the Divine Feminine, kind of one was uh, pretending to be the other, uh, Miak was pretending to be the Divine Feminine. So uh, one way or another, I thought it was the Divine Feminine that I was uh, worshipping there, and that was at the really shitty part of my life, so uh, the Divine Feminine is telling me that, uh, yeah, I'm talking to her again, it is telling me that it was the demon. So, yeah, that's shitty. But uh, anyways, so I kept on asking him uh, if I can get this tattoo. And at one point or another, he just relented and said, go for it. So I was like, woo, awesome. Because, I don't know, honestly, I think I was pissing him off by asking so much. <laughs> it was going to happen one way or the other eventually, so I'm glad I got it. That's awesome. Weird story behind it, but, oh well, that's life. Learned a lot of experiences that past, or that entire, like, year, year and a half that my life was... Generally fucked up by spirituality. Sorry for the crude language, but... Goodness, you have no idea how much it messed up my life. Now, I started talking to, uh... Like, God and my spirit animal and, uh... Good spirits, Mother Earth. And, uh, they definitely helped me kind of pull my life out of their gut. It took me a while to actually realize that there were demons talking to me to begin with. Like, I thought they were good things. And then it's like, oh no, wait, no, shit, sorry. So it's like, well, that sucks. And am I making this weave right here? Anywho, so all the bad ones are gone, all the good ones are here, so awesome. <laughs> and I have a meow tattoo. Meow. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay, quick question. I think uh, with the dragon heads, I think that I want them to kind of pat upward like with Charlotte here. Like you can see the rings, the way that they're layered on the uh, central ridge of the nose. Like if you push downwards, that's kind of going against the grain and you're, you know, kind of grabbing the scale, so to speak. But uh, if you go upwards, you're running with the scale line. So I want to do that for the dragons because it's sort of like a cat. When you pet a cat's the... When you pet the top of the cat's face, you know, like from the tip of its nose upwards, you run your head upwards because, you know, there's a swirl right about there that uh, where the direction of the hair changes. So you kind of go from there and, you know, up their face and stuff. So I kind of want that feel with the dragons. So that's why I have the scales running that way. I do have dragons that run the other way. Do I have one on or near me right now? One second, I'll try and show you a quick comparison if I can. Uh, who's got a downward swirl face? Uh, shade, but yours is very difficult to see, unfortunately. Uh, Hazel, yours runs upwards. Uh, Torben, yours runs upwards. Gloria, upwards. Do I even have any of the older dragons that have it down? Sissy, upwards. Josephine, upwards. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so I'll try and show you one shade here. Oh, goodness! My Deadpool fell. <laughs> I have a Deadpool toy. Anywho. Ready? On another note, pile of dragons! Woo! Don't mind the crinkling under me, I have a bag of candy. Anywho, dragons. So since both of these are toothed the dragons, I can uh, show you probably fairly well. There we go. You can see on uh, Shade here, oops, sorry, that's Charlotte, on Shade, that the uh, rings kind of go downwards. Yeah, you can see on that very middle scale right there. You can see the curvy end is kind of, you know, going like that. You can see the bottom of the ring. So that basically implies that all the rings are slanting downwards if you're going with the grain. Whereas with Charlotte here, you can see the tops of the rings, which means that it goes upwards. Hmm, now you learned. Now you learned. Learned? No? I had a better one in my hand. Anywho, do you want to keep other view uh, with me here? Yeah, sounds like Charlotte wants to stay there. All right. So I managed you can keep me company. Other green dragon who has yet to be named, you stick around. Oh, let's show you the chainmail view. Yay! I'm gonna be getting a uh, new laptop at some point or another, so uh, the quality of this camera is going to improve because I'm really only gonna get, or gonna get a new laptop with a a faster processor, b a better camera. Because so I think this is 0.2 megapixels, which is. <laughs> Otherwise, I have an external uh, camera here which is this one, which has significantly better, uh, whatchamacallit, megapixels, whatever, quality. And where am I going with this here? Okay, I want the scales to be running up. Yeah, if I get a second webcam, I'll need a faster computer to basically have both of those connected to it, so that's the goal too. If I need one. It seems like every new computer or every laptop that I've looked at has a mediocre, like, camera on it, so, boo. But this way, okay, I want these scales to run upwards, which means I do have the mouth opening in the right way. Ah, you can see all these side scales kind of uh, slant outwards uh, towards the front of you here, or towards the bottom of the weave. And that's what we want, because this means this is the uh, tip of the mouth, and this will be the uh, body of the dragon, like by my thumb here. So that'll work well, because that means the uh, rings are running upwards. You can see the top of the rings in the center go, so it'll pat upwards. Mm-hmm. 
Because uh, all of the uh, mouth rings of the dragons are made out of coat hanger wire. Big kind of thing behind that one. I like the fact that it's enameled so that, uh, you know, as you play with the dragon more, it shines up more. It gets shinier. And because Simon here is brand new, so his ring is still somewhat tarnished and such. Like, yeah, you can see it looks like, you know, half enameled tarnished wire. But uh, as you play with the dragon more and more and more and more, ah. Uh, do I have a dragon to play with a whole, whole, whole lot here? Uh, with, say, uh, Hazel here, this one is quite shiny. Hey, and that's because she's come on several adventures with me, so you know, it sits in your pocket, you play with it, it's on your wrist and stuff, and uh, it just kind of shines up. So your dragon shines up to you over time. And now we've got to make a bit of this dragon here. 
We've gotta open this one ring up, it is clear. We've gotta slide this through this little hole here. Then we go and do this this way, and that's how we connect this one thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Okay, we've got that part, but now I need that coat hanger. I will be right back. Okay, this wire coat hanger actually uh, kind of came with the apartment that I uh, moved into here, so yeah, it's a little piece of uh, the current me that's going into this, which is kind of fun. And I've got like uh, 30 of these coat hangers around, so I have no real worry of running out of them anytime soon. Because goodness, I can probably get, I want to say 20 dragon rings or dragon mouth rings out of one of these. Probably a bit less, but you know, not much. 15 or something. So 30 times 15 is 45, 450 dragons worth of rings. Which is pretty decent. You know, uh, all things uh, said, I uh, have a life goal of uh, making a thousand dragons a true throng. So I'll see if that comes to pass. This is going to be number 57. And I'm sure I'll feel better about that kind of uh, challenge to myself once I hit 100. It's sort of like with my webcomic Planet Zebeth. I didn't know how long I'd keep on going for, but I figured, okay, let's make it to 100 comics and uh, see how I feel after that. So I made it to 100 and I celebrated that. And then I made it to 200 and I celebrated that. And I think I did like another celebration for 3, 4, and 500. Then I may have waited for 700 or 750 or something, probably 750. Then I celebrated a thousand, and now I'm just about at 1,300. I'm at 1,299, so next trip we'll kind of get to that nice round number. But right now, dragon making is kind of taking the place of comic making, because I have essentially a backlog of dragons that I need to make right now. Because, you know, I either promised a dragon to somewhere, or someone asked for it, or, you know, for one reason or another, or I traded uh, for another piece of art of someone else's, basically promised to make him a dragon. So, I love that aspect of it most of all. Doing art trading to, like, swap my things for their things. So it's cool. So I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, that's the, let's see, one, two... After this green dragon, I need to make three more. And that uh, last one will be the uh, art trade one, which is going to be amazing that I'm looking forward to. There we go. Nip off just the tip of that. Sounds bad. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the date on when my bottom surgery is going to be. So I'm curious as to when they're going to give me. They've given me like information on, okay, after your surgery, here's this and this and this and this type of thing that you want to follow. So uh, I was like, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, wait, you don't actually have like a date listed for like when the surgery is. So I emailed them back and was all like, awesome, I'm going to print these out and I will. I honestly don't know where to print things in this town, so I'll have to figure that one out. 
And, uh, yeah, we'll see what they say. Oh, get in there, you. Debating whether to use this coat hanger wire or not, it seemed far more flexible than my usual coat hangers. Let me just play around with this here. Okay, I'm gonna get another coat hanger really quick and just kind of compare the two. I don't like how soft it's being. Okay, this is what I would consider a good quality coat hanger. So let's just kind of, yeah, 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 versus, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a lot weaker, unfortunately. Boo! I don't want to use this for the dragons then. Okay, well, I kind of ruined the top of that hanger in this attempt, but hey, you gotta try. So, eh, maybe I'll use this ring for something else in the vague future. It's not the roundest thing on earth, but, you know, I'll put it with my scrap ring pile and see what happens to it. It's mostly round. But generally speaking, with all of my dragon rings, they would be mostly round. You know, as round as I can make them without a uh, mandrel. Alright, so round two. Let's use this coat hanger instead of the hat one. We tried to use you, but oh well, not for everyone. We will bend this one into a nice ring. Sorry, you pulled the say yeah, I didn't pick your words. <laughs> My uh, deities are kind of uh, singing along with me, and uh, pretty sure it was a pool that threw in uh, a line that, you know, she wanted to have slightly different there. Yeah, she just said yes. So sorry about that. Uh, we're kind of working on that right now, a bit of a connection issue between uh, my deities and I. Uh, there's this kind of thing where if they say something, I want to pick like something slightly different that means the same thing. Just kind of like just a personal thing with me. Like if I've said something once, I don't like saying the same thing a second time, I'll usually reword it in some manner or another. So I think that's kind of coming into play with my deities. And uh, you know, I said I don't take their suggestion right off the hop. My brain is like, okay, well, I've heard that one now, so uh, what's another version? So we're working on it. I try and kind of, uh, if I notice it's from a deity, I'll try and like grab the word and run with it if I can. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, how's this for size? We've got a fairly round ring there. You know, let's just compare it to Simon's. It's slightly ovalish in one corner. Let's see if I can adjust that slightly. So you'd have to straighten it out slightly that way. Then bend it more slightly over there. Oh, one corner likes to bend slightly more than the rest. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I'll straighten that out a bit and bend you slightly. You know, just do a whole lot of tweaking to get it as round as you possibly can. Uh -uh, there, over my shirt, you can see how round it is. Quite round. You can see that. Uh, one, let's, where was that angle? One edge of it, kind of uh, the top over here, looks slightly straighter than, say, uh, this corner over here. But uh, generally speaking, it's pretty decent. Like, uh, if I had a mandrel that was the perfect size, I've got to look for that, honestly. Honestly, do I have my uh, transfer punch set with me? Give me a second, we might be able to do something. Give me a second. Give me a second. Where would that go? Please tell me it's around. I'm not buried in my other stuff somewhere. I think we. It's a pretty big box, and I don't remember taking it out recently. I don't suppose I put it in with my drill for some bizarre reason, did I? When I'm packing, I can do some pretty odd things just to like, okay, I need you somewhere. 
And apparently I've taped my drill box shut. Uh, nope, handily thing, drill, drat, drat and persnickety's something. I know I have it somewhere. There you are! Aha! Transfer punch set, which is basically a whole pile of uh, just dowels of different sizes. And it comes in a really, really neat holder, which has all of the sizes all lined up and uh, labeled and everything. Ooh. But yeah, it looks like my largest mandrel is way too small. So it was a, a valiant effort, a good idea. This is the biggest one, actually. Nowhere close. Oh. <laughs> oh well, I hoped for a moment. So I need to find a, uh, preferably not wooden, because you know that deforms, especially if you're going to be like twisting steel around it. Oh goodness, let me kind of go on a detour for a second here. We have a stick. This is from my friend's yard. I can't recall what type of uh, wood it is. I want to say maple or something. It was a really small sapling that he wanted out of his yard. But this is a really nice length to make like a Harry Potter wand out of. So that's exactly what it's becoming down the road. Now that I have my own place, I can actually do things like that. Also, uh, here's a uh, rod that I use, or a uh, tube that I use for my uh, ring tools. Uh, what are the blind chance odds that you're the right? So now too small. That would have been nice and convenient. Oh, hey, I have a whole ton of uh, coat hangers and stuff. Wow, I've got coat hangers everywhere. Coat hangers for days. Days! So, you've got a decent ring here. About the same size as this ring? Yeah. You see, that's almost kind of what I like about uh, not having a mandrel to work with, is uh, all of the, the ring sizes are semi-random. And by semi-random, I mean like not 100% exact. So it's like every dragon is different and unique in that way as well. So when I say no two tra dragons are the same, at the bare minimum, that can be said for, well, A, their signature, their tattoo on their scale. I signed them all. And the mouth ring, which is a uh, custom hand, like, twisted by me exactly like you just saw there. With this nice pair of pliers. Oh, this is a good pair. What brand are you? The brand has been worn off. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I really like ya. Well, I'll keep you around for as long as I can. And I need you another second. Kind of squeeze this side down a touch. And I'll end up breaking this down by like clipping off uh, the like twisty part right here. I have used the like uh, twisted part in the past uh, for my chainmail glove that I showed you last video, but. Uh, Oh no, it says ow. <laughs> Here it says me. <laughs> Anywho, so I'm going to break this down so that it can coil back and forth and uh, fit into this slot over here, which I really need to clean up, which I can really only do when I order uh, five 32-inch rings, because in order to finish my rosary beads that I'm wearing right now, um, uh, I need five 32-inch rings, because I... Stripped some extra rings off of uh, just, you know, weave sample pieces in order to finish my rosaries. And now I need to replace those sample pieces. Like, I left about half an inch or whatever of most of the weaves on there. I only had to disassemble like two of them. And yeah, then I can put them back on my main sample pile and take them out of there and that'll have some room. And I have this absolutely gorgeous uh, wrist sizing uh, tool for uh, how big a bracelet should be. You know, you wrap it around someone's uh, wrist and uh, whatever number it gets to, that's how big you make the uh, bracelet. So say they want it uh, to hang about like this, that would be a number eight. They want it tight on, like I have fairly thin wrists, that would be a seven. Uh, let's see, 15 is way up there. You know, it doesn't have all the, all the numbers. Not sure if it was supposed to, to be honest, because it uh, just has, you know, semi-random numbers. I'm guessing these are the most popular. It also has necklace sizes too, obviously, since it's going up to like 40. I should measure if that's inches, actually. I'm vaguely curious. Then I have an extra, like, just a uh, pink aluminum ring on there to uh, act as a marker for, okay, exactly, exactly how big do you want this bracelet to be? 
Yeah, it jumps straight from 8 to uh, 16, so I'm guessing 7 and 8 is common bracelet sizes. Then 16, I'm going to guess, is a uh, common necklace size. Oh, <laughs> grabbing the wrong thing. Yeah, 16 goes around my neck nice, so that's probably why they only have... Uh, what company is by this by? Leah Sophia. Cool. Yeah, then they have uh, eight, or 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, jumps to 22, then 24, then 26, then up to 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, and then 45, and then 48, and then a 60 at the very, 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 very end. So this is a wonderful present that someone gave me. I, I can't recall who straight off the top of my head. I want to see my bestie Joanne. But, uh... Yeah, I can never lose that, because that is an amazing tool for, like, you know, say I'm at a craft fair or whatever, and I'm, you know, making chain mail there, because, you know, there's time between when customers are talking to you, so you may as well, like, craft. Or talk to other uh, vendors. So, you know, see how it plays out. And, yeah, then you can just, uh, someone wants a bracelet of this weave from, say, like, this sample pile, and it's like, all right, how long do you want it? Uh, this length. Okay, uh, I'll be here for like three days, because, you know, the convention is three days or whatever. And then you work on it. And then you make it to exactly that size. And yeah, that'd be awesome. Because I do definitely plan to open up at like craft fairs and conventions and the like. I don't have enough uh, like actual product to open up my booth for the most part. Like, I have a few dragons here for the most part. Uh, but I want to say I have six sellable dragons, and then uh, the next four, or yeah, like this set of four that I'm making right now, or five, or whatever it is that I'm up to right now. <laughs> um, all of those are accounted for to other people. So, yeah, I can't actually start making dragons to, like, sell at my booth, to be adopted, until after I'm done these five, so. And then I also want to make a pile of earrings and stuff to sell as well. Maybe bracelets. So yeah, I've got to make product. So, you're here to watch me do that. Woo! Don't know if I'll bother recording uh, me making earrings and stuff. Maybe sometimes. But for the most part, it'll be dragons. Kind of another sub-reason uh, behind that. Uh, this green dragon is going to be the first of this set that uh, is going to have its entire uh, creation process recorded. I used to do that with my earlier dragons. Then a whole lot of bad stuff happened in my life and I lost all of my previous accounts and stuff. The see previous demon-like thing. And uh, so I lost all of my YouTube videos, which is awful. Because on all of my earlier adoption scrolls, it had the YouTube address for where you can watch them be created. So I'm going to do that again. Because that's an amazing idea and I love it. And you being able to watch your dragon be born is just amazing. So I'm bringing that back with Greeny here. And that will be awesome. I wish I could have done that with my blue dragon here, but uh, that one was actually started a while ago before I had any kind of setup to like start recording video like this again. So unfortunately the green dragon will be the first one with a web address to watch them be built. Which is kind of sad, because it's a set of three going to the same place. I'm honestly debating whether to put the YouTube channels for the, uh, like, ladder two on there, but... You know, I probably will. Then I'd have to explain to them about the first one. I guess I could do that. Just It, it creates a lot of complication, so to speak. Or potential complication. I don't know. It'd be more honest to put it, so to speak. <laughs> Well, that is going to business, and it's basically, uh, like I'm an employee there, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's think here. Think, 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 think. Because I like to have them biting down on the ring in a certain way. Basically, uh, what's considered the top of the mouth and what's considered the bottom, since with alien male, it's very, very, very similar in kind of all directions. So let's just check here. Okay, I want that to be the top of the mouth. So we need to go through here, 
we skip that ring because we're uh, kind of attaching the mouth ring right now and can prattle on for a while about how this works, but I really, really need to have the camera zoomed in on this to, like, better explain exactly what I'm doing. In either case, I'd normally go through through uh, four rings, but instead of going through three, because there's this big giant 12 inch gauge wire, or 12 gauge wire, that's now sitting in the middle of the weave. So, in order to make room for said giant 12 gauge wire, the enameled wire, I am putting this through three rings instead of four. And that solves the problem. Oh goodness, this is being difficult to close. Kind of both a good thing and a bad thing, because it means that uh, the rings aren't going to slip out of place or anything like that. Like I said, this is uh, aspect ratio specific, this weave. So if they're too big, then the weave will kind of, you know, kind of collapse uh, or something like that, or basically not look as nice. The rings can slip out of place and uh, just appear different. But if it's a low enough AR, then they're physically incapable of sliding out of space because the rings are too small and they're locked into place. And I believe that this is indeed locked into place right now. Also telling because it was so difficult to close. One moment. Tighten up this last ring. Now it's ever so slightly crooked, so... I use like all of my pliers when I'm making a dragon. Okay, I need the big one for this, I need the flat head for this, or flat tipped for this. I need the bent nose for this, I need the zeros for this. <laughs> the nippers here I don't use too often, I can honestly probably take that out since I have these amazing wire cutters. Nippers, you have had your place, but you can go back into the main tool bag over there. In one moment, I just remembered something that I was looking for. Yay! This leather pouch here. I was looking for it for a while, and now I have it. I could prattle on about this for a while, too, since I'm in the mood to prattle right now. You're getting singing and prattling this video. So this pouch contains uh, the rock that essentially is my cat, Jack. Um, when I uh, like lost him, I had him for about, uh, I want to say, three or four years. And then he got uh, feline, not leukemia, but uh, needed insulin, uh, diabetic. And uh, I was too poor to afford the medicine and everything, so I had to have him put down, which, you know, I sobbed over, still cry over him lots today. And I buried him at St. Vitale Park in Winnipeg. So, a little bit of a later time after I buried him there, I was there with my uh, wife at the time. And, uh, like, I just happened to wander by to, you know, see his gravesite again. And I found a uh, open chainmail ring there. Now I'm like, this has to be a sewing. I've never actually made chainmail at this location before, and I can't possibly imagine who else would or how a ring would have gotten there. But it was an open ring, and I felt that he had left it for me. And uh, like I was kind of debating, should I open it or should I close it and you know keep it type of thing. Kind of wish I would have kept it, but at the time it was like. No, he, he's set free. He's supposed to be free, so this ring can't be closed. Because, you know, if I closed it, then that would uh, feel like I like locked him into me again or something like that. And it's like, no, you'll always be my pet, but you're free now. So I uh, let the ring go. And then, you know, I didn't have many opportunities to visit him over the next several years because I uh, moved to across the city, and generally my life turned to hell and everything. And, uh... On the few times that I did visit him, I did visit him like a handful of times, five or six or something. But uh, the la second to last time that I visited him, I found this rock there. It was in winter, and this rock was just sitting on the log where I had uh, sat on last time to talk with him. I'm not sure what it is. I think quartz or something like that with some like white spray or something inside of it. It's really amazing. But, uh, yeah, it's a tumbled rock that's uh, clearly off of something, because it looks like it has some kind of adhesive on the back there. So, 
Interesting, interesting. That was sitting on the log where I, like, talked to him, so that was a gift from him. So this is my Jack Stone. I love you, Jack. And uh, the last time that I visited, uh, right, right, right before moving to the Paw, I went and left him a uh, Tetra Orb, a chainmail ball, which unfortunately I don't have any samples of uh, right immediately visible to me. I do have a really, really tiny one inside of this pouch because I wanted him to have a play toy there. I also have a cross because, you know, he's with God now and God's keeping an eye on him until I get there. Here inside of this little jar is a teensy, teensy, tiny uh, Tetra Orb. I don't know if you can see or if the glare is going to be too much. I think my th thumb is in the way. Oh, you can't see it very clearly. Like that? No. I tried. Anyways, there's a Tetra Orb in there. I think you got a good view. And that's his play toy. I'll probably put a uh, full-sized or at least a uh, not jarred Tetra Orb inside of here at some point. Because, you know, I can't imagine batting around a jar is going to be all that fun. Not that he ever played with the Tetra Orbs anyway. <laughs> But that was uh, literally the only thing that I could offer him uh, when I left. I just, I had nothing else to give him. Like, here's a little washery type of thing. You know, I hope he understood. I think he did. And I left that for him. And, uh, yeah, so I have a sample of that in there along with the cross. And uh, that's the story of my cat Jack. And uh, why I have a Jack stone now. Curious as to what type of stone it is. Tourmaline or something. I keep on wanting to say it's a quartz of some sort because of the clearness. I need to take it to someone who can like identify crystals well. And be all like, hey, can you help me figure out what this thing is? Like you've been looking at rocks like half your life or whatever because you work here and stuff. Obviously have an interest in crystals. What do we got? Oh goodness, I didn't put this ring on properly. Here I am trying to close it. And it didn't go through one of the uh, rings that I needed it to go through. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The head alone, the head alone tends to take about an hour. Well, I think I have been changing my tactics too. Instead of using a 732 inch ring here, we swap that out to a quarter inch ring. So we're gonna try that because this is actually being extremely difficult to get on. And it could be that uh, when I got the first side on, that's just because, you know, I only had one side on, so that's what made it possible. And the second side was less or so. So let's just open up two of these just in case, because it doesn't seem like I'm gonna be closing another, uh, what should we call it? 732 inch ring onto there. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping that I can even get that 732-inch ring out of there. Some suckers is rare. <laughs> the daddy told me to say that. <laughs> They're kind of helping me in my live, or live stream. They're helping me in my stream here. Can I call this a stream? Or is this a straight-up blog at this point? I'm not sure. But I am sure that I need to close this ring. See if I can rotate you back this way where I have better access to that seam of the ring. No. <laughs> okay, let's rotate back this way where I had less access to the seam of the ring but still quite possibly can close it well. I have very, very little slack to work with here. Maybe, maybe. And you're working with like a half millimeter worth of space.
So I'm kind of curious, anyone watching? Um, uh, what, do you have like a mental, physical representation of your stress or like your frustration level? I have what I like to call, call the glug jar, which is basically just a vase that fills with more and more liquid of some sort as you get more frustrated or more just things don't go your way. And when the uh, jar overflows, that's when I basically like, you know, lose it, get frustrated, yell at myself or, you know, do something silly like that. And uh, yeah, that just came to mind. And my deity mentioned, uh, whatchamacallit, talking about it on here. Give me a lot of tips today. They're kind of doing a new thing where they do that a lot. And I'm kind of being a silly and bringing it up because like, hey, this, this isn't my idea just for the record. This is not my idea. This is my deities. This is a pools. <laughs> so blame her. She is at fault. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at this point I just want the ring out more than anything so that I can try and tackle it from another angle. Because <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm messing around with you, I'm messing around with you, and uh, it's not like twisting even one millimeter in any direction. It's like, all right, all right, you're stuck. Let's just, let's just yank you out however we can. Twist you open in some kind of bizarre angle, just for the purposes of getting it out. <laughs> Maybe my Xeron pliers will be able to pull this off. Okay, I need to go under that, over that. Holy crap, they might. Kind of deformed the ring a little bit, and some of the ones surrounding it, which I'll have to do some repairs to, unfortunately. But I may actually be able to either close or come close to closing this ring, which will then be closed. Because, you know, it kind of ovaled a little bit so the opening doesn't uh, connect to each other itself anymore. Eh. You make chain mail, you'll know what that means. There we go. Now they're overlapping a bit too much. So if you grab you like so. There, wait. There we go. Okay, now we have to touch up this other ring that was loosened just slightly because of it. So if we squeeze you laterally this way and squeeze you the exact same way on the other side of the opening. That basically kind of forces the two ends of it together again. 
because you know it's off by like say a tenth of a millimeter or something like that just enough so you can see light getting through the uh, rings there not enough to you know technically it could catch a thread and that's just bad <laughs> I will not allow that let's see this other ring can use a slight touch up here you this part got loose slight slight there we go. Now we gotta twist you down just a hair. Just a hair hair. Or this side of it up. Which we will grab the other corners for. There we go. Get you to rotate like. Oh, apparently we're going the other way. There we go. There we go. There we go. This one can also use a touch. There we go. See, that one ring that I fought with caused me problems with like three other rings. One of which I've still got to poke at. <sighs> okay, we have a dragon mouth. <laughs> Okay, now we need to give it a dragon chin, which is uh, arguably one of the most difficult rings to do in a dragon, which basically means we're going to be taking this ring over here by my uh, the edge of my thumb, and uh, basically making it a gridlock pattern instead of a European 4-in-1 pattern here. I almost think that that would be possible to like adjust when we're actually making the initial start of the uh, alien male weave, but I, don't know, I haven't tried that yet, to be honest. I don't know if I'd be able to place it right, because I kind of got to figure out the rest of the head later. But I have figured out some shortcuts to doing this instead of fighting with it for six hours. We only connected through two rings. Then if I open up this ring over here, one of the side ones instead of that uh, middle one, and I can send that back through. Go through it in the gridlock style. Like I said, go through it in the gridlock style. Then come back out again. Oh, why are you fighting so much? It closed a bit, so I have to reopen it. It's these stressful parts where it's hard to sing in chainmail at the same uh, same time. Same time. There you go. Okay, and now we need to do that one more time with this ring over here that I'm grabbing right now. Like I said, I need to have a really, really, really zoomed in camera. Like, I don't know if I can somehow connect my GoPro to the uh, computer directly. Maybe, maybe it's a GoPro 3, I wanna say, 3. I'm trying to have that as one of the inputs. And then I could have my uh, first person view going. And that would be absolutely amazing. So that's definitely something to look into in the future. Okay, we go through here, back through here. That first person view would be amazing. That's a good goal. Live stream in first person view of Chainmail. Seriously, this is interesting, amazing stuff. Okay, there we go. Now that ring is closed, just slightly. Scraggly. So you scraggle it like so. And now we have a, uh, you can see in the middle there that one ring that's kind of different from the others. You can see the whole ring, the top and the bottom, which gives it this kind of like a hook shape of sorts or like hook upwards, which is the chin of the dragon. So now that that's done, we can put all of these other 732 inch rings away. Whoop! And. Oh, and now we're 10. We really are taking our time on the head, or the head really does take its time. Oops, I do think I need another uh, 732 inch ring. That one that I kind of left off the head, I think I actually need. 
because you know I don't have that same connecting ring on the body portion. So see you are supposed to be angled like that. Then we go through here. And let's see if I can do this this way. Yes, I can. Okay, so mental note. You need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight central rings to seven side rings for the alien male head. For some reason, I was trying to get away from the uh, length of eight, but Turns out it's that way because you need to have the neck connecty. Oh, right, right! I was making this dragon's body in the uh, other type, the uh, dragon back weave, as opposed to the uh, interwoven four in one weave. Okay, that just caught me off guard there. So these dragons are a little bit different, which is awesome. That's kind of exactly what I was going for there. Forgot about that, is all. Okay, so this uh, weave on the belly of the dragon. Let's see if we can turn this into the neck of the dragon. Neck of the dragon, neck of the dragon. That sounds kind of cool for some reason. Neck of the dragon, neck of the dragon. You've got one big neck right here. Okay, I think we got that. Let's see if I want to add any other rings to the uh, edge of the neck here. I sometimes do to kind of get the neck to connect a little bit better to the head. At which point I'm going to need two 3 16th inch rings. You two are pre-opened. So let's just see how this works. Now let's see how this works. Now let's see how this works. I'm testing a thing right now. Oh, how, oh, how, oh, how it works. Testing a thing right here. That's what I'm doing right now. So we take this 316 string and put it over here. Hmm. This might actually be too tight for this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work, actually. This may actually be a decent connection right here and now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I kind of like playing with the neck rings and see if I can do something kind of custom with them, so to speak. Gives each dragon a bit of personality. That's a bit of a sideways ring. I don't think I like that so much. What about doing something down here? Hmm, this ain't bad. Kind of curious as to what this will look like. And will they hang down, which I don't want? Yes, they will, and I don't want that. But can I do something with that over there? It's literally essentially doubling that ring. I don't think I like that. Let's give it a try. Just a test test. I like that word, test test. I don't know if I'll be able to close that ring. Don't really like the look of that offhand. Kinda... Yeah. Kinda yeah. I'll kinda show you what I'm looking at here. I haven't closed the ring, but you'll get the gist. Okay, so compare this side to the other side of the neck, right beside my thumb. You can see a double ring on one side, not on the other. So it's kind of... Double ring doesn't really add. You know what I mean? First person camera. 
that is happening. Check out my YouTube videos uh, for the series called The Scythe. Uh, that's where I'm uh, doing the entire whittling of a scythe in first person. The scythe itself is over there. I can show you if you like. Yeah. You won't get to see the entire thing in the camera just because of angles and stuff. But, uh, it's, uh, yeah, patterned like that. I've got a uh, sheath over top of the blade. So that's awesome. The uh, sheath is named uh, Bellatrix. The uh, scythe itself is named Ursula. And, uh, yeah. KT for Cabbitroid. Kind of my, or one of my online usernames. There's a few reasons that I have two usernames online. Cabutroid and uh, Dragon Mother K. And there was Cabuthunk at one time. Kind of a backstory behind that. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay, if I connect this ring through this away, that kind of gives it gills, which is kind of cool, but this isn't an underwater dragon, so you don't need gills. Oh, can I connect that to that? That's a curious. I don't know if I'm actually going to get any better than this. It's pretty awesome right now. He's saying, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll leave this for the time being. It's a very similar neck to this dragon, despite the fact that the bodies are in different directions. Oh, that doesn't look the way that I like it. Okay, try and play around with it for just another minute. Just, just another minute. Just, just a test. Okay, I closed that ring and kind of like that. It gave it a bit more of a uh, sharper neck so it can turn its head side to side a bit better. You can kind of see the, let's see, there you go, one side, uh, this one, that's more open over there. The other side looks more closed. Do I even have that right when I was pointing it out to you? I don't know. One way or the other, one side was more open and one side's more closed. And now we're going to get the other side more open. And that'll look all awesome and stuff. I hope, I hope, I hope. This is a test. This is a test. Will this work? Because this is a test. Oh, this is a test. This is a test. Just come on and close this ring. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Kind of gives the dragon a horn, which is kind of cool, but not what I want for this place where the dragon is going. So let's undo that. I wonder if there's a way that I can just go through this ring and not that one. And will that solve that problem? 
Oh, that happens. A ring slips out of the pliers. Just gotta hope that you don't like jab yourself at the pliers. Which can actually be really dangerous. Some pairs of pliers have really sharp tips. None of mine specifically. These uh, bent nose, needle nose pliers are probably the sharpest. You know, they have a blunt edge that's uh, say a few millimeters thick, or like across. No, that changed nothing and in fact made it even more prominent. <laughs> All right, let's control Z all of that. All of that. Oh, goodness. A ring overbent. So now we gotta play with that a little bit to kind of get it back into a perfectly round shape with a perfect seam. That'll do. Okay, what in heaven's name is going on now? I'm mildly tempted to leave it like this and modify it further, to be honest. The fact that it has a horn is kind of growing on me. It means that we have three, well, we'll have three more or less different dragons. Kind of growing on me. Not sure why. Huh. So we've got this happening now, and unfortunately the neck is really, really loose. So yeah, you can see it's got a horn there. Let's get a good angle. Yeah, you can see that one ring sticking straight up there. Hmm. Tempting, tempting, tempting. One of my uh, spirit friends is uh, saying uh, to do it without a horn, so let's run with that here. Oh, 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 careful, Leo girl, careful. We're getting into some unmarked territory here. Okay, I need to come around like this. Am I going over or under? Kind of need to uh, undo everything that I just did for the past like five, six minutes. Which is easier said than done. Especially since these two rings are scale rings, meaning they're a ring that goes through a scale, which makes them a little bit trickier to work with in regards to, you know, just pull them out and put it back in from scratch. Oh, goodness, goodness. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay, I think we fixed this side. Beautiful. Side two. Okay, I think I fixed those two rings in specific there. Oh, wow. Okay, so that was a bit of a fight. Still not sure if I like that neck. <laughs> After all that, I don't know if I like it. Oh, and I got a crank in my back. Yeah. Do, 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 do
Is this even right? Is this even right? Double check your work now, because this is right. This needs to go through another ring. This needs to go through this ring. That's what's throwing me off somewhere. Thank you, a pool. Hope that wasn't a pool. Thank you, Divine Feminine. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. She pointed out where my mistake was, her to look at something. Like, hey, double check this thing. I think I saw it off. See, is this supposed to be through that scale, maybe? Hmm. Huh. I want to say no. I want to say no. Hmm. How could we tighten up this head at all? I'm going to try one more thing here. I don't like how loose the neck is. So we're going to try and hook it through this scale here. Okay, that affects the scale more than I want them want it to. Might have helped with the stability of the head, but I don't like the way it's yanking that scale upwards. Not only is it asking it that scale to bend, but it's also kind of angling it up at a weird angle. Like, let me show ya. So one side the scale, on this side, the scale is all sitting all nice and stuff, and on this side it's all like angled upwards. I don't like that. Me no likey. Huh, I really, really want to do something with this neck. Oh, when chainmail takes a lot of trial and error. Okay, this might not be too bad. This might do. That'll do, I think. Now I just have to close you better and put one on the other side. Will it help with stability? I think so, at least a little bit. If nothing else, it kind of fixes my whole mental inability to like the fact that the neck was just connected like that with two rings. We need a four-ring connection. I don't know why. <laughs> oh goodness, I just realized a video series that I have to watch. I'll do that after uh, my stream today. What time is it? Oh goodness, almost seven. I'm uh, Michael Cthulhu. 
he uh, like makes giant swords and stuff, and his work is absolutely amazing. And he put out a new video series for a raider sword, like uh, Guts from uh, the anime Berserk, his original sword. So that is so awesome on so many levels, and I gotta watch. Okay, Blue's head is a lot more stable, unfortunately. You can kind of get him to talk a lot better. You know, you play with the scales behind his. This one's head is a bit droopier. Not sure if I like that, and not sure if I'm capable of adjusting that. I'm going to try and clip just a little bit of this ring out here. Thank you, Paul. This dragon is being made by me and deities. There's a little bit of spirit animal inside of here. A little bit of the divine feminine. Mother Earth wants a piece of it. God also wants a piece of it too. Come on, speak up, you guys. <laughs> okay. We locked out about a millimeter worth of this ring, which will kind of tighten it up in general. So now if I take this ring and put you back through here, because that kind of came off when we shrank that ring, that should be just a little bit better. Come on. Come on. Okay, I did get those two rings in, and that's not too bad. They do have a tendency to uh, overlap one over top of the other. That's just unfortunate, and I don't think that there's a way to uh, change that. That's just the nature of the beast at this point. Are these two scales looking correct? I was playing with a lot of rings. Did I pull something out that I shouldn't have? No. Okay. Okay, that's pretty decent. All right, babies. Put in your suggestions. Well, I've got a whole pile of like 19 gauge enameled copper rings that I was going to try and use for eyes, but unfortunately it's just too weak for my likings. Okay. Boop. Boop. Mm. Yeah. One moment. Go like, ah, off camera and such. I apologize. Slight readiness in my nose. Same as this one. Awesome. <laughs> Ooh, this eye turned out really, really nice actually. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Normally I have to play with the eyes for like ages. Yeah. 
There we go, smoother uh, closed off the uh, seam of it well. And now, let's just kind of pre-close this ring just to see if it's going to look good on the dragon. No, it will not. Thank you again. Mother Earth. God's, er, God's telling me to do the legs as well today. Like, I've been streaming for, what is this now, hour and a half? And to push for the legs as well. Oh, goodness, this one's going to take a while to upload. Well, I've got a 12-hour shift tomorrow, after which I'll be... Oh, well, it depends on if it's uploaded on the live stream. Okay, those eyes are that. Yay! Heck, we all forgot to give names! Almost looks like this one has glasses on. Hey, we've got Judy, Sam, Eric, David, Gary. Judy, Sam, Eric, David, Gary. You have those names to work with. Okay, so my deity is full kind of put in the thing. Gary, Judy, Sam, I think, David. What did I say? Maybe I was David. What do you want to be, little dragon? He wants to be a David. Mm, our greater dragon snake has chosen his name. He's a David. Aww, that's awesome. So we have Simon, we have David. Garfunkel? <laughs> that would be kind of amusing. Okay, now you need some legs, and God is all in on that one. So let's get cracking on these legs. Okay, that don't need. Boop. Better view. Okay, let's get this coat hanger out of the way a little bit. Gotta put this up here. Coat hanger, you go there. Bad coat hanger, that weak one. You go in that general direction. That'll be kind of where I'm piling up my trash. Kind of want to trim these eyes down just, just a hair. It's almost like they're kind of sticking out to the sides too much for my likings. Like, let me show you Simon versus David. Guess they don't look too bad on camera there. Yeah, these ones seem maybe wider spaced apart. And these, not too bad, I suppose. Okay, David's telling me to keep it, so we'll run with that. I believe David is the Dragon of Compassion. Ah, ha, ha, ha. There we go. Sorry, I had an itchy on my head. Yeah. <laughs> okay, legs. We need a whole big pile of 3 16 inch rings. There we go. I'm gonna have to open up another bag of 3 16 but that's alright because I'm fairly certain I have them quite close. Let's see how far this takes us.
Okay, let's see. Uh, 25, 26, 27 rings per leg. And if I'm not mistaken, that was 15 and 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That one's pre closed. Get all the pre opened ones out here. Eleven. Hmm. Look, there's one that's open. I'm just kind of taking all the open ones in general. We want to have at least twelve closed ones. Yoink. And we need fifteen of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Well, there you go. So let's weave some dragon rings. In this here way, we need four rings to attach to this one. That is a yay. for a second that uh, 108 ring, uh, rings inside of the dragon legs. I kind of have a weird connection with the uh, number 108. Uh, when I was uh, like AGDQ, the uh, video game um, uh, marathon that lasts for a week, they do two of them a year, AGDQ, Awesome Games Done Quick, and SGDQ, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Summer Games Done Quick. So uh, I donated to them as I tend to do. And uh, they read my, you know, post online, because if you donate, sometimes they read it online and stuff, or like, you know, during the marathon and stuff. And uh, for some reason, they said uh, my name, Kabuthunk108, which is just kind of cool, because, you know, that wasn't part of my username before. So I kind of, like, counted that as my number, so to speak. And I do have to say, that number is turning up a whole lot, just in general. Like, you know, I look at the time, it's 108, I look at this, it has 108 views, it's 108 seconds. Things like that, just like, huh, I saw that number again. And it's kind of an obscure number, like, 108, what's with that? So I'm kind of glad to have that number. Big, big, giant, long story behind that involving you know, the demons and all that shit. But, uh, otherwise, 108. They used the number against me, it sucked. 
Anywho's, we are making dragon legs. Hope you don't mind me talking about all that, by the way. Feels too good to get it off my chest. Been sitting there for like a year and a half, and you know, who can you talk to about this? Preacher, I suppose? I don't belong to any of the churches in town yet. Goodness, vaguely curious as to what they're going to say when they realize that I worship multiple deities. Don't worry, God's one of them, it's cool! Them. Then we have a dragon that will be so awesome, David. You're an awesome one. Come to think of it, uh, hey, you're the green dragon. Is there any people named David there? Because that could cause problems, it being the same name as one of the residents. I think we're good, though. I think we're good. God's telling me to rename it, though. Might be a girl, God's telling me. But don't like the name David because it's uh, the name of one of the residents there. And you know, not, I'm not sure if that's going to cause a problem or whatever. Don't really want to ask permission to like it. They're not related. It kind of came to mind after the fact. Yeah. Trying to be extra careful instead of just more natural and stuff. Boo. Davina. Davina, that's a name I think, isn't it? I'll just kind of do a quick Google search in the background here. It's kind of close to David, but it's different enough. Why is the browser not opening at all? I am waiting for it, but it is taking forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Counting the rings at all right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I need 15 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Eleven. Ah, definitely a name, Davina. You want me to name Davina? No, I want to be a guy. 
Okay, so maybe just uh God's still saying not David. Hmm. Joseph, we have one of those. You want to be a Gloria? God's suggesting that name. That's a pretty awesome one, I gotta say. And I don't think I have a dragon named Gloria yet, so what do you say? Hmm. All right, uh, she is deciding to become Gloria for the sake of uh, all that is good. <laughs> all that is good in the world. So, uh, Gloria, all right. Kind of got to be careful around corporate things, unfortunately. You know, I have dreams of making dragons for uh, like corporate like mascots and events and things like that. But then there's the trickety world of Okay, now what names can't I use? Or, you know, specifically wording the adoption scroll in a specific way so that it's like, you know, as good as possible or whatever. It's more manufactured if you have to do it for like a big company. At least that's kind of my vague way of thinking about it. I may just uh, give them one that's like, you know, most natural, probably. All right. Uh, God's definitely uh, solid on the uh, Gloria part there, so that works out pretty well. Oh my goodness! Uh, Simon hasn't had uh, his signature scratched into the back of him yet. Oh goodness! You're not quite, 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 quite done. Oh. Okay, we'll take care of that. Don't you worry about that. We will take care of that. Ah, oh, itchy. Mm. Oh, sorry, I've got some cranks that I've got to get rid of. And sorry about the occasional knuckle crack, it's a oh, bit of a bad habit. Oh, but after playing with pliers for several hours, your hands definitely need it. Just, oh, that felt so good, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I shouldn't be influencing you. Cracking your knuckles is bad, it's an ugly habit. Kind of sad with me, it started at a really young age, my brother cracked my knuckles for me. And basically I kind of kept on doing it ever since. And thankfully I've looked up online, it doesn't actually cause arthritis or osteoporosis or anything like that. So it's just, it's just ugly as all. Here, see if you can guess this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
That was the underwater theme to Mario Brothers. Yay! <laughs> is that every dragon gets a uh, titanium ring inside of it. Somewhere or another, it gets a titanium ring. Not sure how, to that, how that'll work with the black dragons, because, you know, uh, you can't get black and uh, titanium rings, so it'll only be for the silver dragons, which seems unfair. So it's like, kind of wavering on that one. Okay, you, you're three sixteenths. I don't want to be unfair to the black dragons, because you know you're just as awesome, if not more awesome looking. You're mildly more difficult to make, but you know, they have silver eyes, so I could do titanium eyes, but A titanium isn't as shiny, so I kinda like to hide it inside. And it shines up over time. But still with the eyes they don't really see much, you know, ring to ring action. So it's a tough call. Okay. So that initial pile of rings got us two and a little bit uh, legs, which means we probably had about 60 rings there. Okay, let's see how far that gets us. Okay, we've got a handful of open ones. Now let's go get us a closed one. Let's go get us a closed one. Let's go get us, let's, all right. Let's go get us a closed one. Let's go get us a closed one. Let's go get us a closed one. A closed one. A closed one. Yes, a closed one. <laughs> I have no clue where that came from. I apologize. direction that will smooth that out. We want perfectly round rings without a jagged bout. You gotta be twisted in this slight different way. There you go, there you go. Let's work with the rest of these hay. We... how many uh, closed rings do we need here? Let's see, 12, 24. We need 24. Closed rings are right about now. So let's go and count them out there for we need another twenty. Do 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 
Exciting. <laughs> Twenty-two. Chainmail is slow. Oh, it's so wonderful. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. You know, when you make that big project that's fifty thousand rings, and you collect connect that last ring, it's a glorious moment. It's magical. Just like, yes, I finished. Ah, awesome! Like towards the end of a project like that, you really start pushing yourself like, all right, I'm going for like five hours today or like six hours today or something like that. And it's like, oh, I'm staying up late and being tired at work tomorrow. We've only got just a few more inches to go or something like that. Oh, it's good stuff. What I'm picturing right now offhand is like a uh, t-shirt and, uh, you know, the inches like being, you know, how far down the body it's running. I'm definitely going to be making me another uh, scale chainmail shirt. Um, I'm thinking that to kind of like uh, commemorate, is that the right word? I'm thinking that to like basically exemplify all of my dragons that are all of the different colors. I'm basically going to get a whole pile of bags of random colored scales or just buy a whole pile of bags of rings or scales and uh, like of all the different colors and uh, just scatter them together equally. And uh, I think that'll do a pretty good job. Okay, and for making this uh, t-shirt, we have two votes for uh, uh, scrambling together all of the scales all at once, and two for doing, say, four bags of all of the colors at a time. So I'll have to... Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, do them all at once as well, because I don't know, for some reason things it seems like the it would have a different randomness to it the second time around I did four bags at a time. And I don't know why, because that makes no sense mathematically. <laughs> so I don't know why it would be different or like, you know, look like a different section, so to speak. So that's kind of annoying me for some bizarre reason. <laughs> God's behind the all at once theory, though. Doesn't trust random. Really speaking, I trust random. Logic is behind that. You know, depending on if it's true random or not. I kind of came up with a fun little uh, argument slash, um, uh, like thought game, uh, there's a better word for it. A thought game for you to, thought puzzle, who keeps saying that? Mom, 
Okay, so a uh, thought puzzle. I can talk to my mom too. <laughs> a thought puzzle for you to just kind of chew on for a while. So uh, say you're given a random string of numbers and uh, like, yeah, you're given a random string of numbers. Now say after looking at it for a while, you notice that every tenth or yeah, every tenth uh, number is a five. How long do you have to see that five for before you no longer believe that it's random? Like, you know, okay, once or twice, okay, that could be coincidence. Three, four, five times you see that five go by, it's like, okay, it still can technically be coincidence. Like, how many times would you have to see a repeated number in every tenth digit before you no longer believe that you had a random string of numbers? Like, when you first got it, they said, okay, here's a random string of numbers. Look at it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I posted that online once upon a time ago. Someone said six. I figured that was a little bit low. I might give it until eight before I thought that it was no longer random. Then probably watch it for another few just to verify that it's uh, non-random. Okay, let's see uh, nine and ten go by here. Okay, yeah, yeah. One more maybe? Eleven? Yeah, here we are also a five. Do I want to stay here long enough to look at twelve? Eh, evens are good numbers. Yeah, twelve's a five. All right, let's call it. So let's say 12, I'd wait for 12 fives to go by, just for like added verification. Now if on like the, say 11th uh, five, it turns out to be like a six or something, then it's like, huh. Okay, that was just a really, really long string of like coincidence. But you know, if at 12, it's like, oh, all right, you're not being random anymore. Boo, someone lied to me. <laughs> Basically the only outcome. Uh, called Norfair, uh, one of my songs. I think I still have to add it to my discography. Got to get a really good recording of it and me just, you know, generally well presenting and not all schleppy looking and everything. Schlep, that'd be a term that my mom would use. Oh, it's difficult for me. Like when inspiration hit, hits, it hits then. And it's not all like, all right, well, I'll just like wait for like 10 minutes to like go and put on makeup and brush my hair and get the hairspray out and everything. No, it's like, okay, I have to sing this now because I've got the right emotion inside of me and it is going to sound great. So, you know, that kind of dilemma there. Like I should be presenting well for the camera and everything, but then I'll lose the edge. Then you lose the music and the music's got to win, at least a lot of the time. <laughs> Most of the time, even. 
<laughs> like you can't let the art fail. You can't let the art fail for the sake of presentation. Ah, artists. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we actually have enough rings here. Uh, there should be enough of the uh, closed rings. Oh goodness, I am so sorry. You had this poor ring jabbing into your like, head or eye here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, does it, was it Desire that we named it? Gloria! Well, oh, that was way off. Sorry, little Gloria. Oh. Was it Gloria? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and that would be all of the rings needed for this dragon. So let's put these last few together and make us one. Glory, yeah, you will be made soon. Hallelujah, glory, yeah, you will be made a dragon very soon. song there. <clears throat> so we make a dragon land. It's gonna be so good. We just have a few rings left. Oh, who would have thought we could finish the dragon tonight? Two hours in here. We've got a long recording. But not that bad, I hear. Honestly, if it were if I were a live streamer, well, when I could become a live streamer again, I'd love to get to the point where I'm streaming for like four hours a day. I don't know about solid or whether I'd have like a break in the middle. I'd probably have to do like weirdest builds where I have a break in the middle to, you know, just relax, get a bite to eat, go to the bathroom, things like that. He calls them bio breaks. <laughs> but you know, stands to reason, get water, get whatever. And yeah, that'd be awesome again. I'm not entirely sure if I like the idea of doing four hours straight in a row. With the live stream, it'd be a whole lot different because you'd be chatting with the viewers as well. And that makes a lot of difference if you're, you know, talking with people while you're working. So I'll get there again. I'll get there. Don't you worry about that. Huh, I'm a little bit off camera. Do, 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 do. I apologize, one moment. Oh, nuisance. Is this a... Sweet! We still have a 532-inch ring. I thought I lost... You're from a fresh bag of rings. Why is there a 532-inch ring in the 316-inch ring? Okay, well, whatever. We have a 516-inch uh, ring. Woo! No, I just need one kind of defect like that in every single bag, and eventually I'll have a whole pile of 532-inch rings to play with. <laughs> do 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 do
you know, I can't even really complain all that much. I imagine a lot of this is done by human hands as well. So, you know, you're going to be sweeping rings from, like, whatever the table into the bag or something like that. Well, that just stands to reason. Especially with the saw cut rings, because that requires, like, a lot more precision in the handling of the coils and everything like that. That said, what I kind of like to purchase from the Ring Lord every so often is what they call floor sweepings, where it's basically just literally that. Uh, it's the rings that all fell onto the floors. So you're getting a random pile of random sizes and random materials. Uh, not a random pile, but, you know, say uh, one pound or two pounds. Or however many, like, quantity you order. I think the minimum is one pound, I want to say. And yeah, it's kind of fun, because then it's like, all right, well, what can I make with just a whole pile of random stuff? You know, some of them are going to be the same. Like, you're going to have five or six of the same type of ring. Because, you know, they're cutting, like, 50,000 or 100,000 three sixteenths inch stainless steel rings. And, you know, say five or six of them is going to land on the floor. Just because bouncing. <laughs> and now we have all the dragon legs. All right, Gloria, let's give you some legs. Legs, girl! And then you get a clasp. And tattoo. Okay, and to do the adoption scroll, that's going to be a little bit of a trickety thing. We'll have to run off to grab the papers for it and wash my hands a little bit so I don't get, like, you know, ring dust all over the, whatchamacallit, paper. Okay, come on now. Come on, Gloria. Okay, connected you there, now got to connect you here, come on, stop fighting. See, I think we got that right. Only one way to tell. Close it so you're capable of letting go of the pliers, and have a look-see. Do, do. Hmm, I don't know if I like that. It's not bad. Could it get better? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. We connect this differently. Again, I can try and show you, but without a first-person view. Okay, you can see it pretty good there. The kind of uh, part where the uh, arm connects to the body, I kind of like those two rings to be a little bit more spread out from each other. And right now they're really, really close to each other, which I don't really like. Definitely like them to be more spread out. Yeah, okay, I'll try and show it to the camera like that. That worked out pretty decent. Do 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 do. We're testing here, people, testing. Got to figure out the best live stream kind of angle and everything. Live stream. Vlogging angle. Okay. Oh, sorry, Gloria. Got to pop that out. And now we'll try to get it to go through these two rings. 
Come on. One. And. Come on. For heaven's sakes. Talk to my friend Sven right now, kind of spiritually. He's saying, like, try hard and go hard, or, you know, positive things like that. Uh, so that's good to hear. Who's talking to you again, Sven? Don't know if I like this type of connection either. Because now the front ring is different from the second ring. Yeah, it's hard to envision there. But the way that it's connected to the seam on the side of the body is different from one to the other. It just takes me a moment to kind of figure out how best to like spit it out. Okay, what is wrong with this that I don't like? It's not right. <laughs> how isn't it right? Just look at it. <laughs> Tangle of rings. And now's the part where I hunch over because well, it's been a few hours and I don't have a backrest. Generally speaking, while I'm live live streaming. Streaming? While well, I'm recording. Chain mailing. Generally speaking, while I'm chain mailing. Hmm, let's see. I don't think this works. What am I missing? Yep, that would be correct. Divine Feminine. Okay, my deities kind of want me to uh, correct that statement there. I said Divine Feminine, it was actually a pool in the CA who said that. Now the reason I got confused is because it was coming from the top left, and that's normally where I speak to the Divine Feminine, but uh, this time it would like, I kind of uh, heard a pool say her name there, but it kind of threw me off. It's like, wrong direction. That That's where Divine Feminine sits. So I got to get used to that, because every so often they like to jump to another side, and it's like, Ah, but we're practicing with each other. It's training. This is all spiritual training, and you're a part of it, sort of. Or at least get to listen to it. Doop -doop 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 Gotta say, if you had asked me like five years ago if I would be like unbelievably spiritual and devout, I would have said, "Are you out of your batshit crazy mind?" Because I was like completely non-spiritual back then. And now it's like, God, you're awesome. The pool, hey there, Mother Earth. Aw, Divine Feminine, hey you. Yeah, d life has definitely changed in five years. Goodness, life has changed definitely in five months. Yeah. I'd say something like, who knows where it'll be in the next five years. It'll be uh, vastly different, I imagine. At least that's my plunge, my goal. Next five months, I see very, very little change coming my way. At this point, I'm in coasting stage of making my art, getting experience at work, and pretty much that. <laughs> A few other random things. Collect some stuff, get some stuff. Rebuy my life. Uh, come on, you. Oh, goodness. This one ring is just going to fight. 
other pliers. Where are my other other pliers? I should name my pliers. The sheer fact that I haven't is a little bit of a travesty. Like I've got my blunt nose, my bent nose, and my zeroons, and my loins bins. But that's just the type of player that it is. Uh, do I name like all of the stuff that I've made that I've but I've uh, never really named my tools. I have a few times my handmade tools. <laughs> Maybe that's just a thing with me. I can't name my tools. Just the things I make with them. Like I'm kind of drawing a blank. Like okay, Gary, David, John, and Sam. Yeah, those aren't gonna stick. At least I doubt they will. <laughs> I'll just leave it as is for now. Oh goodness. You can't see it, but I had to crank my neck again. I'm hunched over for too long. Okay, we're almost done the dragon, and then with any luck we'll be able to do the adoption scroll as well. Woo! See if we can polish this off in, okay, not two and a half hours. We're sitting at 226 right now, but we'll see what happens shortly after that. Do, 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 I do, 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 Man, Gloria, you are being born with very bouncy music. I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do I do I do I do I do 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 Oh, I hear you tumbly. My tumbly is grumbling. Okay, we got that leg on proper. What is going on with these back two scales? It feels like one of them is off. You're connected to four. You're connected to two. we make a minor mistake when attaching the tail to the body, we did. Okay, we need to do some repairs, and I am glad that I caught that before I got too far. Okay, adoption scroll put off just slightly. Leg, you get put off just slightly. That would explain why that back scale always seemed loose. I was like, what is wrong here? Answer was staring me in the face the entire time. There's only two rings on me, and I'm like, all right, well, cool, you're connected both sides. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to disassemble the tail from here. Oh, goodness, I know exactly when this problem came up. Exact. Okay, so. Hmm. You. You are the ring that I want to open. Your counterpart on the other side. You will unconnect from that ring and that ring alone. Then you. Uh, nope. Not you. 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 You will open up. You will disconnect from this ring specifically. There we go. Her tail has been removed. Whoop. Okay, now we need some quarter-inch rings. Quarter-inch rings, oh, quarter-inch rings. We need a handful of quarter-inch rings. Just a few of them quarter-inch rings, oh, we need them all quarter-inch rings. Quarter-inch rings, oh, quarter-inch rings. I do definitely like my quarter-inch rings. Quarter-inch rings, oh, quarter-inch rings. Oh, where, oh, where's my quarter-inch rings? Here they are, here they are. Quarter-inch rings, oh, quarter-inch rings. Here they are, here they are, 
quarter inch rings, I love you so. <laughs> quarter inch rings, quarter inch rings, quarter inch rings. I love, I love my quarter inch rings. <laughs> my favorite ring size is actually 3 16 18 gauge, 3 16 inch rings. Mm. It's also the ring size that's used to make scale mail or attach small scales. A nice ring size to work with makes for fairly small weaves and bracelets and such. It's a nice AR so most everything uh, can be made with it. Yeah, it's, it's decent. It's a good ring. Yeah. yeah on the very last uh, tail or scale at the bottom of the body, I didn't put four rings on it, I only put two. And that back there is exactly where the problem started. Thankfully, it is very easy to fix with, I'm going to need another few of you. Quarter inch rings, oh quarter inch rings, I just need another few quarter inch rings. What I need is quarter inch rings, oh quarter inch rings, oh quarter inch rings. Quarter, quarter, quarter inch rings, I definitely love my quarter inch rings. Quarter inch rings, oh quarter inch rings, oh why is it so fun to say quarter inch? Rings, oh, quarter inch rings, quarter inch rings. Let's try and save that song. These rings, quarter inch rings, quarter inch rings. Let's go attach these quarter inch rings. Where are you gonna go, quarter inch? You gotta slide through quarter inch, quarter inch rings, quarter inch rings. I think I've said enough quarter inch rings. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so those being out of the way, now I can reopen this tailoring. You are slanting this way, which is exactly what I want. And you can go reattach to here, and also to here. Let's close you. Reattach the tail, at least partially. Now I need this ring to go through. Okay, where? What's going on? Where here? Okay, okay. So if you go behind there, then if you go through there, I think that'll connect that to that. It'll definitely connect that to that. But is that what I want? <laughs> Hmm, I don't know if I like that. Hmm. Okay, this one will be really difficult to... Did I put this on backwards, maybe? I think I did, actually. I think, think, think if I flip the tail over, it'll connect better. Let's try that. I was going to try and show you, like, what's going on here, but again, that really wouldn't... What in heaven's name did I just do? <laughs> okay, well, I took off the roll grin. Um... Huh. What in heaven's name did I just do? I took apart the second ring from the uh, alien male or uh, elf weave weave, which is bad. So now let's try to fix that. Oh goodness, delay I didn't need. Is there a chance that I can do this? without much fighting. Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, let's try this again.
Hmm. These two aren't on right. I don't think. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe they are. Not quite. Doing elf weave backwards is difficult. So I don't go through the eye of them like that. Does it go through like that? Maybe. I think so. Never really done elf weave backwards. Like I always make it in one direction, but to uh, repeat it in the opposite direction is it, it works differently, which is really weird for a chainmail weave. Did I get holy goodness I did I get it? I got it. Double check. By Jove, I think I've got it. Okay, that is awesome. All right, you. Back to you. Okay, yeah, so you should be slanting upwards like this. This is the right configuration. Let's pop you in like so. There we go. Holy goodness, finally. There we go. Now we have the tail properly connected. Hey! So now we can connect the legs properly. The back scale, we're now connected to four rings. Proper. Quarter inch ring, quarter inch ring. You four go back over there. Oh, quarter inch ring, quarter inch ring. Gotta put back my quarter inch ring. <laughs> Three sixteens, three sixteens. We're now working with three sixteens, so three sixteens, three sixteens. Definitely love my three sixteens. Okay, where oh where oh where 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 oh where oh where oh where where oh 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 where do I connect this ring? Right there, right there, right there, right. I'm in a silly mood right now. There, 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 right there, right there, right, 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 right there. Now are you looking? One back leg. That's not right. For goodness sakes. It's a little bit too high up on the body. Like it should be coming out uh, kind of by the back scale. And you can see it's like, you know, one scale forward from the back scale. So. Mm. Okay. I think if we move this one, that'll help. Okay, so we want to be on this crossover of the last scale, the lower X. I don't think it works quite the same because this belly is made differently than the other dragons. So I think we are actually doing it like this, which if memory serves from dragons of long ago, is the way that I did it exactly when I made dragon back weave 
were all of my dragons back then. So that makes sense. The X's work differently in this style of weave. Good to know. Good to know. It's been a while. Then like that. Hmm. Okay, I think I like that more. Do I like it all the way more? How about you, Blue? This is a little bit... A little bit far forward still. Shoot. Goodness. This dragon is just taking eons to finish. Oh, for the Dragon of Compassion, that does make a little bit of sense. Compassion takes time. You can't just rush it through. It has to be filled with love. I tend to resort to clicking when I'm kind of at a conundrum of sorts. Okay, now I'm just messing with like the same two rings back and forth for a while. So it's like there's not new music for me to sing, because so I'm just kind of struggling a bit. Okay, where do I want this ring to go? Let's maybe work on that. Do I want you this far back on the tail? The back leg is kind of partially on the tail, partially on the body. Not sure I really like that either. Okay. Come on now. Come on. There you go. Okay, just like that. Right there. There's been times when I've said that like a dozen times. Right there. Oh, no, wait, that's crap. <laughs> okay, now I think of this goes through those two rings. That will solve those from being too stretched apart. So we let go of that ring. Sorry I'm being so quiet right now, but in a concentration mode.
Oh, goodness, goodness. Okay, I think we got those two rings the same side to side. Now, the last ring. Check it out. We're getting there. We're getting there. You can see the one leg is fully attached. I'm holding on to the last ring there. Technically not the last ring. The last ring is one, the one that attaches the clasp, which allows the dragon to fly along with you on your wrist. We have a dragon! We have a dragon! <laughs> That's the sound a dragon makes. Okay, three sixteenths. Three sixteenths? Three sixteenths? Hero, here's a three sixteenth. You want to pick out your own class? That one? Alright, the dragon picked out her class. I like to offer that. Yay! Dragon, 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 dragon. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We have a second dragon fully made. Now we need an adoption scroll and your name tag and stuff. And I do happen to have my dragon bag right with me. I do have to wash my hands. I'll be back in one minute. Time it. Okay, I've got a few things here. Washed my hands, have a binder, and I also have my uh, paper for. I'm uh, writing down uh, adoption scrolls. Okay, so I already give myself a note to use loosely first because I've wasted too much uh, waterproof paper. I may have to write this one in my lap, but you also need a name tag, which is exactly what you're going to get right now. Don't worry, I'm going to have one of those aforementioned candies. Let's have a chocolate. It'll keep me up. It might. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Something sweet for the end. Okay. Can I write it on screen here so that you can see? Let's try.
Okay, Glory is the Dragon of Compassion. She loves to help others and make them feel as comfortable as possible. Whether it's fetching a coffee for a friend, or getting someone a foot rest, giving someone or getting someone. Maybe giving, and giving or giving someone a foot rest. Maybe giving, that sounds a little bit better. And giving someone a foot rest. She likes to do her best to hmm. she likes to do the, to do her best to please them, to make them happy. It's for this reason that I uh, do it on loose leaf first. She likes to do her best to I don't want to use the word comfortable again. The pool is saying uh, best to give someone a one or give them a wonderful time. She likes to do her best to give, whether it's uh, fetching a coffee or a friend or giving someone a foot rest. She likes to do her best to give someone a wonder. Or, how would I say someone? Giving someone a foot rest. She likes to do her best to give them a wonderful time. Let them have a wonderful day. How can we word that? That was God there. She likes to do her best to... Keep leaning towards give them a wonderful day. Where is the dragon of compassion? She loves to help others and make them feel as comfortable as possible. Whether it's fetching a coffee for a friend or giving someone a foot rest, she likes to do her best to give them a wonderful day. He likes to He likes to give people a wonderful day. Ooh, she likes to make sure that they have a wonderful day. There we go.
Okay, I think that's going to be the uh, final wording there. Bit of a shorter uh, adoption scroll, but we'll run with that. Okay. Full waterproof paper now. This one will have the web address to the uh, How I Made Her videos. Ooh. It's a little bit short on here. What's another sentence I can add? Full of love, this dragon is sure to make your day. Make you feel welcome at home. There we go. <laughs> Feel free to rename her if you like and enjoy the comfort and silence that she will provide you with. And enjoy the comfort that she will provide you with. Yeah, that's not bad.
Can I get another Katie Lynn? Yes. The scroll is waterproof. <laughs> Exclamation. <laughs> okay, now every dragon scroll comes with a uh, like little doodle in the top left or top right corner. I love to draw in spirals. So ten well they all are spiral based. All of my doodling tends to be very spirally. Oh yeah, Earth Day, March 10th, 2019. Hmm. Yay, her adoption scroll is finished, with the minor exception of we need the uh, web address for how we made her. That's awesome. We might as well get the rest of her done. At which point we need a... Here you are, Albert. Albert, which has my inscribing knife. My tattoo artist. <laughs> Something. I won't be able to scroll up the uh, scroll yet. Okay. Okay, she says she actually doesn't want her tattoo just yet, so uh, that'll be done off camera, unfortunately. But you gotta listen to the dragon. You have to listen to your dragons. She thinks it's not fair that uh, Simon here hasn't gotten a tattoo yet, but uh, I'm gonna be saving him for a special video where I do his tattoo and adoption scroll in a separate video so that he can have a web address on his. Because right now, like, I made him without it being recorded. Just didn't have my life set up yet. So she is deciding to pass on that so that he gets finished first. So that's so sweet of you, Gloria. Try it up compassion. So we'll set that aside. So uh, yeah, we'll call it a day there then. Woo! We have two dragons. We have two dragons. Ah. So that's all wonderful and stuff. And whoop. Nice long stream we had today. Thanks for sticking with me. And uh, it's been wonderful. Have a wonderful night, all. Rear!